Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be talking about some GPU risers. Going over some of the details, some of the glitches, some of the problems you might have with risers. So if you think that's interesting, hit like, subscribe, hit the bell. Go to CryptoLLC.org if you're looking for a GPU or ASIC mining farm. And check out our other social media accounts like Gab, Parlor, Mines, uh, BitChute, Rumble, and so on. Alright, so we just got a shipment of a bunch of uh, risers here. You see them, I'm going to start taking them apart. And I uh, open up a box and go over one of these risers. So, this is the more premium riser. You can see how wide that is. You can see how many uh, capacitors it has on there. All the different power configurations or plugs that you can plug in. So, not only will you, can you use like a Molex, you can use SATA. Let me uh, use two hands for this. All right, so they come in like packages, come in like boxes usually most of the time, um, and uh, it's a standard six pack of risers. So USB, this is from the uh, company uh, Malayan or whatever that is. You get them on Amazon. So they make really good quality PCB boards. You can see the quality of this little PCI Express plug here PCIe 1x to PCIe 16x plug so these are really nice quality ones uh, you can feel it just by touching the PCB board it's a good really nice plug now for the riser itself it has a lot of these power uh, voltages and capacitors and all that stuff and uh, has you can see different power configure or adapters configurations you can use so you can use a standard plug right here it's a standard one I'll show you I think it's in the box here let me pull some out must be in a different box in there um, but it comes with a standard power uh, SATA. Let me actually go get a SATA cable because it's not in here. It might have come in a different box. So let me do that here. All right, so it usually comes with one of these. One of these SATA. And uh, so you plug them in just like this, right? And then you run power through the SATA. The other configuration you have is a Molex. You can plug a Molex directly into it. And, uh, or you can plug a SATA on this side right here directly. So rather than using this adapter here, you can just do a direct SATA connection right here. So you got SATA here, SATA here, and then a Molex here. Um, so now talking about some glitches. Before I get to the power questions, so people ask me why do you use this, right? Or actually this, why do you use that? I made a separate video about it, so check out our channel, search for that. Uh, talking about GPU risers, power usage. You can find that on our channel that goes into depth of why we use that. Um, but otherwise, let's talk about the GPU uh, errors that you might receive. So sometimes when we're mining, uh, we would be mining, mining for you know days, and then for some reason, say GPU number four has a problem. So we try to, you know, restart GPU number four. We we uh, maybe might adjust the frequency or the overclock, not the frequency, the overclock on it. You'll adjust the overclock, but it still has the same problem. It still crashes. It might mine for an hour, crash, or might mine for 20 minutes and then crash. And uh, after we try, you know, installing or looking for driver updates, or we try down clocking it, we try all those different types of uh, fixes. If nothing works, then the next thing we try is we look at the riser. So sometimes the GPU might slide out a little bit. So let's say this is the GPU, the riser sitting directly on the GPU like this. Just imagine the GPU is right, you know, inside of it, inside of the riser. And then the riser goes like this a little bit, right? A little bit sticking 
down. We're coming off a little bit on the on the back side of the GPU. So now the connections on this corner right here are not fully connected to the GPU. And so that could cause issues. Or it goes like this, the other way. So you have a lock here, obviously we use a lock, um, but it doesn't mean that it won't have problems. It can still have problems. So that's one thing we look at. The other thing is we look at the connections um, at the USB side right here. So let me grab a USB cable here. So just uh, let's plug this in, right? And uh, so if we have a problem, we take a look at the USB side and the USB cable could be rather than plugged in all the way, it's actually plugged in not all the way or maybe it's a little bit crooked. So maybe it's like, you know, like this, right? Instead of all the way in, it's a little bit out. So that could be an issue. The other issue is the same thing on the actual connector here. Yeah, same problem where the USB is not fully inside the connector. Um, or the actual connector here is not fully in the motherboard. So let me grab a motherboard here, right? And uh, let's plug this guy in, right? So we're plugging it in, it's fine. But what happens is if it's a little bit out or if it's a little bit crooked, see how that moves? Then that could cause glitches. And the glitches could be just, it runs for a day, then it you know, crashes or whatever, because it might be just slightly a little bit to the side or to this side. So when you plug in these guys, you gotta make sure that they're plugged in all the way in, right? All the way in, and they are not tilted to the left or to the right, and they have to be all the way in. So when you build out your whole rig, you have your 14 GPUs, uh, you gotta make sure that every single one of them is fully in, right? Then also, like I said, the USB could be coming off, so, here, I'm gonna show you here. So just imagine this is just not fully on, it's just a little bit off. And so this thing would be sitting, yeah, I'm trying to do this with my left hand. There we go. All right, so it'd be like this. And so you could have a problem here or at the board. So you gotta make sure it's fully in, this is fully down. Now we try that on some of the cards and, and it fixes the problem. But another glitch or another problem you can be seeing is that even if you reset or reseated the risers at all possible locations, so you reseated the USB, you reseated the power, you reseated the GPU, you reseated this USB, and then you reseated the motherboard to PCI Express uh, plug, you reseated all those possible breaking points. You still could have this problem continue, you still have those errors, and another issue that could be happening is you could have dust or garbage inside of the PCI Express slot. So what we do is we have some rubbing alcohol and a toothbrush. So what you do is you spray some rubbing alcohol inside of the PCI Express port right here, and then use a toothbrush and you clean it out. You know, you especially clean it out all those little teeth inside. So you clean it out, then you also clean out the uh, capacitors, these little chips, the powers, you know, all that stuff. So you spray rubbing alcohol all over the riser. And then you just run your toothbrush through and scrape stuff off or whatever. And uh, that, that helps a lot, actually. That usually fixes the problem. Um, you also spray rubbing alcohol inside of the USB. So you put rubbing alcohol inside of there and you spray that. And then you run your toothbrush inside. Um, then you also put your rubbing alcohol inside of this connection here. So inside this USB right here, let me pull this apart. Right, you put your uh, rubbing alcohol inside and then you also run your rubbing alcohol on these pins. And then you run your rubbing alcohol on these little connections right there. So those little, those little uh, solder points. So you wanna get rid of all that stuff. So what happens is if you have a little bit of metal fragments. They could be connecting these data points right here, right? It could be actually messing with them, with those little solder points, and then that will cause the GPU to glitch out. So you make sure that you gotta that you clean out anything between these points, right? So you do that. Then the same thing over here, inside of the PCI Express line, you see those little pins. Let me stabilize my phone. All right, you see those little pins. 
right? Same thing, you gotta make sure that they're all clean because sometimes you might have a little piece of garbage fly in there and then it doesn't have a connection or maybe like a piece of little tiny, tiny little piece of metal that could be shorting one of the connections. So you clean that out. So that should fix the issues. All right, now let's talk about the riser uh, power. So, some people have been talking about this. I'm gonna, I already made a video about it, so make sure you check out our channel. But I'll just mention it again here. So some people will be talking about that the uh, SATA cable does not withhold that much watts, that you can't load 100 watts on a SATA cable. Um, and they, they would cite like uh, technical data sh showing that you can only load 54 watts on a SATA. All right, so first of all, um, it depends what SATA you're using. All right. Second of all, looking at the statistics, or not the statistics, but looking at the uh, spec sheet for SATAs, um, there are multiple points of, of connection on the SATA. So if you look at a spec sheet of it or a diagram, a schematic of the SATA cable, you can see that there is, I think, nine points on there, nine points of connection. Um, each one of these pins can hold 1.5 amps. So you have nine times 1.5. I mean, I don't remember off the top of my head right now. I think it's nine pin, nine connections. You have nine times 1.5 amps, right? And then you're running each one at um, at that maximum voltage, which was around, I think, six. So if you run the math on there, and like I said, I, I don't have that information in front of me. I looked it up a couple weeks ago just to verify everything's fine. But if you look up that information, look up that schematic, you'll see that the SATA cable can easily handle 150 watts. Like, no problem. It can easily handle 150 watts. It's not an issue at all. Um, the other thing is, if there was an issue, so some people might say, well, it's, you know, it's not technically right. It has to only load 54 watts. If there is an issue, anyone that understands how electricity works and how amperages work knows that if there is an issue, the wires will get hot. Right, these wires will get hot. So, if this plugs in to the SATA cable, I should be able to feel heat here. So, I put my fingers on here and it's plugged into the SATA. I'll feel the heat here, meaning that it's overheating, or I'll feel it on my EVGA SATA cable that goes directly to the PC, PSU. I would also feel it there, but it's not. Uh, you can watch my video where you can see that it has absolutely zero. Now, it's not even warm, all right? It's not, it's not the fact that it's hot or not. It's not even warm. It's, it's cold, like dead cold, like it's not even being used. Now, same thing over here. I will be feeling hot wires at this connection point, right? I plug this in like this. I would, should feel warmth here if it's overheating. It's not. Also, if it was overheating or too much amps being loaded here. I would feel the heat at this location as well. I would also, there's a good chance, I would see these pins have some sort of deterioration and they have absolutely none. So after running our risers off of SATA for literally six months on the on some of our newer rigs, right? The newer 3080 rigs. Um, the first ones we put together, you know, six months ago, just for the 3080, not before that. But on those 3080 rigs, it has zero effect on performance, meaning that it's not degrading performance. The wires are cold, right? Absolutely cold. And we're running two GPUs on a SATA. So just because your tech specs show you that a SATA cable should only hold 54, it does not mean that all SATA cables are created equally, right? We're using EVGA 1600 G plus power supplies and uh, they're running just fine. We're also using EVGA 850 uh, power supplies to run two cards on there. And we also run those two cards off of, off of one set of SATAs. And those are also fine. So everything is working just perfectly fine. Um, they're not being overloaded, nothing like that. So you, you could run them. Now, obviously, I don't know um, if every card is like that. The 3080s, the 3090s, the 3080 Ti's are. But if you know, you're running some kind of card like a you know, 580 or 
480 or whatever, or running some AMD cards, and who knows, you, might, you have to test it out yourself. But we ran our test. We also ran a watt meter on it. We ran uh, a temperature gun on it, everything. So they're absolutely fine and safe and everything like that. Just make sure that you test it yourself. Plug in two cards on one SATA. Feel it here after like 30 minutes, an hour. Feel it here after 30 minutes, an hour. Feel it here. Uh, plug in a watt meter if you have two power supplies. Run a watt meter directly to a PSU that's running only at the riser and see what that wattage usage is. Then after like running it for a day, again, go feel it. Feel all the power, uh, you know, points of connection here, 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 and the SATA cable itself and at the power supply. And everything, if everything's cool, then you're not overloading the amps, right? Everyone knows that. If everything's cool, you're not, over, not overloading the amps. All right. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys like it. You know what to do. Hit like, subscribe, hit the bell. Go to CryptoLLC.org if you're looking for G GPU or ASIC mining. Send us an email. We'll get in touch. And until next time, bye.